You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Uh, I'm sure really, really happy for our guys, um, you know, to, to get another win in the tournament. Um, obviously, that's a really good team. Um, and, you know, a lot of respect for Pete and his crew. And I said it in the press conference after, I think those guys have done a great job. Um, a very good team. So we knew we'd have our hands full. Um, it certainly didn't start great, um, but proud of the way our guys fought and battled. It certainly wasn't a work of art. It wasn't necessarily clean, but just thought we had great effort. Um, guys competed. They stuck together. Um, these two guys were great in huddles. Um, just when things didn't go well early, and then I thought as Luke got better as the game went on, and that really helped us. And um, Again, we had some, some opportunities, and we canned some of those opportunities. Some of them were a little fortunate, whether it was a rebound or something like that, but um, those are the types of plays this crew needs um, to be successful, and it's what we've been preaching. So happy to have a, a chance to play again on Saturday, and hopefully um, we can get a quick turnaround and start prepping up for a real, another really good team. With Viner Four Gates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. Try Viner Four Gates for making your company work is our primary mission. Phil, the miles you guys have been able to get as a second group to get to play particularly today, how valuable has that been? Huge. Um, you know, I think those guys, you know, we uh, kind of went into the year, um, you know, those guys, all three of those guys were on the scout team together last year. Um, and so they developed a really good chemistry. Um, and so a lot of times we'll mix, mix and match the other line, but that line we try to keep it intact because they, they play off each other pretty well because they did it all year last year. I thought Jack Brennan was big for us today. You know, we've been kind of waiting for him to hit stride, and, and his two goals were big juice goals. So he's a, just a very beloved guy, um, and I think everybody's been kind of quietly waiting, much like Spanos early in the year. Um, so those were, were huge juice goals for us. And um, Murph, we, we slid in an attack. Uh, Maltzy's not felt great the last few days, so Murph played a little more attack. Um, to kind of help down there, and, and he got some opportunities, and, and he can those one on a break from Will, which I thought was huge. I think the first thing that has to be proved by the lawyer on behalf of any client who's injured their neck or back is that the client was hurt, and they were hurt in this accident. And even though they had pre-existing problems, the damage to this individual client is much worse now after the crash than it was before. We do that with pain and suffering witnesses. We do that with doctors that know the individual patient. Yeah, Coach, overall, the uh, offense certainly started slow, but what started to click? What was the key thing for the offense when it started to click in the second period? Uh, I think just settling down. Um, obviously, Luke did better in the, the second quarter. Um, first quarter, again, um, Matt did a great job for them. He's an awesome face-off guy. Um, and, you know, winning four out of five in the first quarter, you know, not exactly the way we wanted to start, but Luke just kept battling. Um, and so that possession got evened out a little bit. Um, and then I thought our guys just handled some of the pressure. Hopkins, super athletic. Um, they challenge you all over the field. So you got to navigate jumping picks and, and pressure in your hands. Um, and things like that. And I didn't feel like the first game we were great there and they capitalized on it. They did a really good job against us. So uh, this, that was something we kind of focused on was just to try to have more poise, um, you know, and, and in their 11 wins, um, we kind of did some uh, statistical analysis. They had the ball more than the other teams in all 11 wins and the four losses, the other team had the ball more. So you, and I think their pace of play and one of the metrics we looked at was like 63rd or 64. So, uh, they get everybody involved. Uh, they share the ball. They're selfish. They're super skilled. Um, they win matchups. So you got to be on point. And I thought these guys communicated pretty well. And, and when we had some breakdowns, I thought Luke did a really good job of bailing us out. Yeah, this could be for Brett. So John was out today. He seemed to be only playing man down. Ajax obviously out. How can you speak on the depth of the team? Yeah, uh, I think you look across the board all year. You know, it hasn't just been a thing over the last couple weeks, but really embracing that next man up mentality. I mean, you see a guy like Nick Red who's playing close defense up until this year, uh, grabbing a short stick in December and, you know, doing an amazing job for us there. And then, you know, John's not feeling great, like Coach Ed Malti wasn't feeling great. So Nick Red had to pick up a bowl again, did a fantastic job for us. So 
um, kind of just have confidence in who's ever out there that if we play our system, play our game, and trust the scout report that Coach Bernhardt gives us, we'll be all right. Or how did you kind of size up how you were able to contain them the last three quarters? And I think they only had like 21 shots or so. Yeah, I just think early, uh, I told the guys we got down 3 nothing and just need to take a deep breath. I think um, like a boxing match or a UFC fight, you kind of got to feel out your opponent for those first few minutes. And then uh, I think that timeout, kind of being able to bring it in as a team, take a deep breath, regroup, uh, and then come out of that break with a little more urgency um, and knew a couple of the looks that they were giving us, stuff we saw on film. So I think once we kind of realized those were the looks that we, were, we saw on film all week, and kind of just adjusted to that, we uh, put ourselves in a good spot to be successful. Right, you, you guys have been in an unfamiliar position this season, uh, not winning a regular season title, being a third seed, having to play a quarterfinal match. Getting to this point, does it feel like order has sort of been restored for you guys? Uh, I wouldn't say just yet. I mean, uh, obviously we have a great Michigan team in a couple of days, uh, and you know, anybody that watched that last game, they're definitely gonna give us um, everything we could ask for, we gotta be really prepared. But I just think this year has been very different uh, for me individually, uh, the guys that have been here, this group, uh, there was such an expectation following these teams to kind of live up to that. What they set, which was such a high pedestal, not only in the, the winning and the way we played, but just the standard, you know, the way you carry yourself and all those things. And this group's young, so throughout the year, we've had to learn from adversity, uh, through injuries, through next guys stepping up. and. Uh, we've kind of just found a way, you know, even though it's taken some duct tape, kind of just strapping it up and, uh, you know, having that next guy ready. But super proud of this group. It's definitely made me grow as a player, a leader, and a person. Uh, and I tell them every day I wouldn't trade them for the world. Coach Garrett Gibbons has been playing a lot more recently, D Mitty especially. What can you say about his performance and the decision to play him? Uh, yeah, Garrett's uh, a really smart player. His dad's a coach, uh, was a three sport athlete. Um, you know, he, we carved out a role for him. He's been helping us a lot in the clearing game and the man down game because he's smart and he's a good athlete. Um, but, you know, with some of the guys going down, um, it was an opportunity for him to get more. And he's really good in our system. He makes great decisions, he's great in the clearing game. Um, he's good on ground balls, uh, communicates well, so I think he knows the system pretty well. Um, so he's, he's been great. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, as we're getting prepared for the game and, and get, not really giving us regular shifts, I mean, it was basically of the seven guys that were playing defense all game, Brett was the only guy that played last year. So um, I don't think I've slept a lot this year, but certainly not this week. Um, because you know, you're, you're, you're trying to do your best as a coach to help these guys, and Dante's a great athlete, but there's no, no substitute for experience, so you're just hoping that through film and practice, you can help replicate what it's gonna be like in the game, and you try to do your best because you're always on yourself to make sure, did we go over this, we talk about this, because you want to see them succeed because they work so hard. So um, again, proud of these guys. It's been a, a, a very different year, um, but a, in a lot of ways as a coach, very rewarding year because all the, the change and everything like, you know, this could have been an easy excuse to say, well, with everything that's happened, like, you know, like, you know, it's just not going to be a good year. And these guys have just, you know, and, and obviously Dante coming in was a huge um, just asset for us um, in the middle of the year. Um, Brett, obviously, with his leadership and how he impacts other people, like, just wasn't going to let it happen. Um, so, again, each year is different. Like, you know, maybe we didn't win the Big Ten regular season championship. But sometimes as a coach, you, you look at how far you've gone. You're more proud of a group like this just because you know how hard it was and how many guys had to step up. I mean, we're shaking hands before the game with them. It's four out of 10 are freshmen. So, um, you know, you have confidence in them, but you also know like they're freshmen for a reason. So, uh, but again, um, you know, sometimes when you're a freshman, maybe you don't realize you should be nervous. Um, so you, you take stock in that. So do you think that there could be a spark there for Helen? Obviously playing time opportunity, some of it there, but given the kind of season that he's had, do you think this can be something that can spark him? I hope so. You know, he, he, he was dinged up a lot. He had a couple things that really, like, he wasn't practicing a lot, especially in the preseason and the early season, so he could never really get going. Um, and then that led to another thing that happened. So, like, you know, the, the ankle injury you saw at Michigan. So, you know, so it was all these things. And then, you know, it was really hard for him two weeks ago. You know, he didn't play a lot, um, obviously. Um, you know, didn't go the way we wanted the last time we played Hopkins, and that's tough for him. Um, but he handled it with class, and you know, we talked about him getting healthy and just, hey, you're going to get opportunities. 
Um, just, you know, just keep it simple. Um, you know, just execute the game plan. And I'm, I'm happy for him because we, we need him. We need him to, to play like I know we can. So um, I'll keep my fingers crossed there. Dante, Dante when uh, we talked during the football season about whether or not you're going to play, you talked about how you watched uh, last year with your dad and you realized how much you missed it. How fulfilling is it now that you're in May and these games are monsters and you're right smack in the middle of it? It's just something I dream about, um, you know, coming up up my career, like seeing the Turks and more day weekend and, you know, coming out here with these guys and Coach Till. And, you know, they've just been very supportive of me and I'm just having fun in my life. So, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy it one game at a time, one practice at a time, you know, that's how my fun is. We obviously played in the, this rivalry one time, you know, before, but like, what was it like for you to play out here and just what do you think of the intensity of this, this game? So like, it's hard to come like to a team when like, you've never been in that type of rivalry, like Brett and then Coach, like, you know, you'll feel it throughout the week, but once you're in the game, you're like, whoa, like this is like serious and there's history of talented like alumni who cared a lot about the game and, and it's like playing it at home is big and then doing it again is getting another shot at this rivalry like it's, you can't even put words to it. From your perspective Dante, what were some differences in you guys executing defensively in the second half today versus the last time you met these guys? To be honest, we just playing to our standard. Um, I'm not gonna just, you know, give our secret sauce out, but um, <laughs> Just playing, you know, old fashioned turkey style defense. Uh, you know, my line was supporting on the system, all that stuff, winning a matchup and being able to support around it. We have guys that went out and we honestly could barely tell because we play a system, it's not selfish, and we just move, have moving parts to learn the system. Yeah, I thought we did a better job of the offense helping the defense. You know, in the last game, we gave up some fast breaks where we just had silly turnovers and they got four on threes. Um, you can't give a great team like Hopkins four on three unsettled, they're gonna kill you. Um, and that's what happened last time. And I felt like we didn't give them as many this time because uh, you're playing with fire. I mean, they got three great attackmen down there at all times. So, you know, the old guys doing a better job of helping these guys and trying to get them the six on six situations and not give them numbers advantages. And they still got a couple. Uh, 20's goal was great. We didn't get back uh, the way we should have, and they made us pay like they, they typically do. Right, and now you guys face a Michigan offense that scored 16 in this game. What has changed defensively for you guys? Uh, just playing the scout, I think if you look throughout the year, whether it was Loyola early, um, you know, Notre Dame at times, Michigan, kind of just got away to Dante's point of what we do. You know, try and win your individual matchup, but then also support when you have to. Um, you know, if a guy gets beat or a guy gets a step, sometimes you gotta slide. And I think through those games, we've grown a lot, a lot of experience gained there, uh, and just a lot more confidence around this time around. Um, but, you know, they got three attackmen that, you know, can win a one-on-one -on -one matchup that can, you know, beat a pole. So we really gotta be buttoned up there, take some pride there. But um, like I said, the last time we played them, they were definitely a handful. So we gotta get back to CP, get back to the film, recover, and be ready for them. Coach, you guys were a perfect 20 for 20 on the clear today. These guys obviously a big part of it. What can you say about how important that is? Yeah, we, we're big on, you know, we talked about possessions um, and the possession battle. Um, and they have two really good face-off guys. And, you know, I thought both those guys did a good job uh, last game. You know, that Matt doesn't start, but then they bring in, obviously, the other guy, and he does a really good job. So anytime you can do well in the clearing game, those are extra possessions. You're also taking away a possession, but also typically transition. You know, you fail clear a lot of times. It's worth half a goal because if you if you lose it and the the the, the teams are spread, a lot of times it's unsettled going the other way, um, and you're just playing with fire. So um, anytime we can keep the ball away, whether it's a good ground ball, face off, um, clearing, riding them back, those things do add up over four periods. So uh, again, these guys have done a great job with it. Um, you know, Logan was. Um, one of the best clears in the country, and I think Roop has, has done a really good job in a short amount of time uh, navigating that thing. It's not always pretty, um, but the guys did a good job. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it.